everyone. Welcome to Pipes, Tobacco, and Whiskey. So today I wanted to show you a little technique that I uh, picked up while I was at uh, one of my club meetings a couple of years ago. And uh, what I'm going to show you is how I press tobaccos. Um, a lot of research done on the internet, a lot of listening to guys in our club meetings, uh, a lot of videos, a lot of reading. Uh, and I kind of tweaked a lot of different methods to come up with the method that I use. Um, the reason why I like to press some tobaccos is because it does a couple of things. Number one, it kind of speeds up the maturation process. If you're wanting to smoke a, a tobacco that is aged, uh, this kind of speeds that process up because what it does is it takes the components of the tobacco and it squeezes them together, uh, forcing the cells of the leaf of tobacco to rupture and uh, those tobaccos under pressure begin to meld uh, faster than you would maybe in your cellar or something like that. So that's one advantage of, of uh, pressing tobaccos. The other advantage is, is that, you know, sometimes I get tobaccos in that I'm trying uh, from different sources that just there's something off with it it doesn't quite taste the way I want it to taste and um, possibly uh, just has a lot of rough edges or it's not really mellow the way I would like it so pressing will kind of help um, th those tobaccos kind of take those rough, rough edges off and uh, kind of give you a little bit of better product so this is what I do um, I got on Amazon and for $15 I bought a noodle press and this noodle press basically is you know you just you make pasta out of this uh, you would stuff your dough in here and you would turn on the crank and just kind of crank the pasta right out right out of the end with whatever attachment that you would use this one is happens to be the spaghetti attachment uh, which is the one that I use because uh, it has the smallest amount of holes in it uh, compared to the other attachments, so it, it helps kind of keep all that tobacco compressed. All right, so I've got my, uh, to my uh, pasta press, and what I've done is on the inside of the attachment, uh, I have cut to fit the diameter of this uh, from a tobacco top like off of a Cornell and Deal, uh, the lid, or maybe even uh, like a Pringles top that you can cut off. It's a piece of plastic, and I put it in there so that nothing would squeeze out. It kind of uh, acts as a barrier. Now, a lot of guys will just go ahead and cram tobacco inside uh, their tube. Uh, some guys will put at the bottom of the, the attachment a piece of wax paper to kind of keep it from sticking. What I do, and, um, I, and I've had really good results with this, is I just take a Ziploc bag, a sandwich size Ziploc bag, and I will pour all of my tobacco inside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some tobacco that I got oh, about a month ago, and I smoked two or three bowls of it, and I... I um, it's a good tobacco. It's a Rango's Balkan Supreme, which is very, very similar to Peter Stokeby's Balkan Supreme, which is difficult to find now. Um, and I noticed that uh, it has a full Balkan flavor, but it's kind of rough. It needs some time to kind of age a little bit. So I'm hoping to uh, speed up that aging process by pressing some. So what I'm going to do, this is about two ounces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put almost all of it into the press. I'm going to leave some out so that I can sample and compare between the two and see what, uh, what has happened to that over the, the process. Now, normally I'll do, I'll press for about two weeks. That's about how long I'm going to press this. Some guys do it for just a few days. Some guys press for as long as a month. Um, it just depends on how, uh, how long you want your tobacco to sit and, and also how much pressure it can take before it turns into a block of, of rock. 
so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take almost all of this, and it, it seems like this is not going to uh, fit in this little jar, but you'll be surprised. So I've taken almost all of it. I've got probably about a half an ounce left in my jar. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start filling my Ziploc bag with the tobacco. Typically, you know, when you, uh, this, what, what's going to do, it's, it's going to form it into kind of a crumble cake. When you have ribbon cut like this, it's basically going to turn it into a crumble cake. Now, originally, when they were pressing tobaccos, they would use whole leaf. And that's kind of how you get your plugs. Uh, if you've ever smoked any GLP spark plug, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, that has kind of a whole leaf component to it. Uh, layers of leaf on there and they press them together. Uh, and that kind of turns into a plug. Well, this right here is going to turn more into a cake or a crumble cake uh, when you're done with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to almost all the way seal this. And I'm going to try to squeeze out as much of the air as I can possible. I uh, want to make sure that I put my attachment on one side. And remember, it's got the, uh, the uh, tobacco lid or cover on in there to kind of keep it from uh, squeezing out. And then you just have to kind of gently work it, work it in, into your tube. Now, you guys will say, well, it doesn't the, the Ziploc bag kind of get in the way of the press? You know, yes, a little bit. Uh, uh, when we take it out, you'll have to kind of peel the Ziploc bag away from the, from the uh, cake. But surprisingly, it works pretty well, okay? All right, so now I've got pretty much all of that in there, and I'm going to finish sealing this. Notice that my, uh, my zip lock part portion is at the top. I've kind of squeezed all that tobacco in there, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it down just a little bit as far as I can with my hand. And then I'm gonna put my lid in there. Now, the first time I crank this down, I'm gonna crank it down to about as far as it can go and then I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm not going to keep cranking until I feel a whole lot of pressure. So I'm just kind of cranking it down. I don't, I feel a little bit of resistance. Oh, there goes a part of my cap on the end there. I feel a little bit of resistance, but nothing, nothing too bad right yet. So now it's getting pretty tight. I'm not going to force it. And by hand, that's about as much as I can turn it. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll leave it on my shelf in here and each day I'll turn it just a little bit more until it feels tight. Turn it a little bit more each day uh, for about two weeks. And when you're done with that, What's, what your product is going to be is you're going to end up with something like this. This was two ounces of Sutliff's Voodoo Queen. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I wanted to age it a little bit more. Uh, you can see that I've cut off some pieces already to smoke, and it was considerably better uh, after I pressed it. And uh, the colors, you'll get a little bit of uh, liquid coming out of, uh, you know, kind of oozing and it'll kind of absorb it again. Um, it, it's a little bit wet, moist. Uh, but I let it dry out just a little bit. But you can see that there's layers of this flake on there. And it's, although it's pressed really, really well, it's pretty easy to take pieces off. You can see how I can just kind of uh, take some of the little ribbons off of there so it's it's really a pretty good crumble cake um, and I'll put it back into the jar and just kind of preserve it that way uh, it, it this 
this actually did improve that blend pretty well. So anyway, that's what you're going to get. So what we're going to do is, this is a little bit of an experiment, is we are going to come back in about two weeks and we're going to pull the... Uh, the the cake out of out of the press and then we're going to do comparative smokings between the cake and the ribbon cut on this Arango Balkan Supreme. If you've got any questions, if you've got any comments, uh, please make sure that you uh, post those and I'll try to answer them uh, as I can. This is a very inexpensive, there's all sorts of ways to press it. Some guys I've seen using PVC pipe uh, and C-clamps I've seen guys actually go out and buy a product that's made for it, rather expensive that way to press. Uh, but this seems to be a pretty good way, an inexpensive way of, of doing that. So um, if you've got any questions or comments, please make sure that you post those. Uh, and this is going to be interesting to see how this comes back and, and uh, tastes and how the profiles change. I'm going to get my boys. They, don't, they have never tried this uh, Balkan Supreme. And so we're going to get my boys to uh, kind of do it and I'll do a blind tasting for them and uh, see which one they prefer. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, hope you have a great week. Um, thank you for watching. And don't forget, make all your piping moments count. See you next week. Bye-bye.